Hello again, everyone. This is Rob, aka Hated Hero, bringing you my Magic DK Trickster build for Morrowind. This is a battleground focus build, meaning no CP. We'll dive right in. Our out of serial stats are with champion points allocated, so these stats will be lower. All points into magic. Tri stat food. Max tri stat food. Atro. And I run vampire. Stage 4. I never feed. You can choose to run with or without vampirism. And you can choose to feed and have it lower. I'm too lazy to do that. I just stay at stage 4. Max magic. Right around 40k. In Battlegrounds, this is around 34,000. Max health, 20k. It's a little bit higher than this in Battlegrounds with the 5k bonus for PvP. Max stam is around 15k. Just over. Magic recovery is around 1,300. Health and stam recovery, not worried about on a build like this. Spell damage, 1461. A lot of people are going to freak out about this. This is a no CP build. In combination with your dots and scoria procs. For me, personally, this is plenty. The only thing I can't kill are the targets that nobody else can kill alone. Meaning the super high health, perma block, BS builds that are out there which there actually aren't many of in no CP. And even they can be worn down very slowly. I choose usually to just walk away. I'm not going to waste my resources or time on those targets. They can't kill me. They're too tanky. Spell crit, 32%. This is going to be 22% in Battlegrounds. Spell resist unbuffed, 22k. Physical resist, 18. Crit resist, 2k. I have about 1,000 points in CP in this, so it'll be right around 1,000 in Battlegrounds, which is plenty. This is a block build. Okay. The sets that everybody have been waiting for. I've gotten countless PMs in the last two days from Battleground games where there have been other Magic DKs, even people that aren't Magic DKs asking me what I'm running. They're running the meta builds that are out there and they're being outplayed by this build. Set 1, Bloodthorn. This is a pretty popular set. It's ran on a lot of builds. I've been testing it for about a week off and on in combination with my second set. And I just feel like it is the best option for this build. There's others out there if you'd like. Amber Plasm, that's hard to farm not interested uh, desert rose there's there's quite a few different options out there I like this one though because it also gives stamina so what are the bonuses you get spell damage you get max magic you get magic recovery great that's everything you want for a magic build the fifth trait bonus, when you deal direct damage, you restore 645 magic and stamina. This can occur once every 5 seconds. Direct damage is basically anything that's not ground targeted. So, everything we do, except for leap, proxies. Every 5 seconds. Go with sharpen on your front bar. You can enchant it with whatever you want. I use Oblivion Damage. 
back bar defending. This is our turtle bar. This is where we're going to just soak up that damage, wait for help if we need to, or the right time to go offensive. I use a restore yeah. stamina glyph on this bar. Monster set, Scoria. This helps us with the low spell damage of this build. It procs very frequently with a magic DK because you have so many dots on your enemies. It also gives you max health, very beneficial for no CP. For those of you who don't know, this is how it works. 8% chance to summon a meteor that deals flame damage to the target and all enemies around the target. It can occur once every five seconds. Now here's the set that I have been running. I would not have made it gold if I didn't feel like it was a worthy build. This was all tested purple and once I was happy, everything was upgraded to gold. This is my bread and butter set, I feel like. It's one of the new crafted sets that came out with Morrowind. It's called the Daedric Trickery set, hence the name, the Mag DK Trickster. You get max health, max stamina, max magic. All great things to have. Fifth piece bonus. This is a fun one. While in combat, you gain one of five random major buffs for 10 seconds every 20 seconds. Eligible buffs are Expedition, Protection, Mending, Heroism, or Vitality. I can't tell you the amount of times where Expedition is proc for me and I've been able to run down a Nightblade <laughs> that was hauling butt for his life that would nine times out of ten have gotten away because a magic DK has no expedition. Well, guess what? You can randomly get it now. It is at random. It's not when you want it, but when you get it, man, is it fun. And it does proc a lot. Major protection. 30% less damage for 10 seconds again i cannot count the times this is procced and saved my life when being beat on mending helps your healing great heroism great extra ultimate generation vitality great you're not gonna get a bad buff from this set and they all go so well with magic dk and the way we play this build. The cooldown is 20 seconds, but it starts as soon as the proc does. So you get a 10 second buff, 10 second downtime, and then you get another proc. I run all max magic glyphs. If you don't like the amount of stamina you have, swap one out for stamina. If you don't like the amount of magic you have, which I don't know why you wouldn't, 30k plus in battlegrounds is pretty good. I do have one stamina on each shield. Make those magic if you'd like. There's always flexibility to your playstyle and builds. We're going to dive into the skills now. Before I even start here, I'm going to say again, you do not have to run the same skills. This is what I'm successful with. You might be successful with something else. I'm going to go into detail on how I use them, how I combo them for kills, because I have not recorded a video yet of me playing this build. I will show you my leaderboard scores from about, I would say, 8 hours or so of Battleground gameplay. To show that this build produces points and it will get you on the top 100. So 
Resistance. This is our damage bar. Fossilize. This is our primary CC. Even after the target CC breaks it, they're immobilized. So they either have to cleanse or shuffle or dodge roll to be able to move for an additional three seconds after you CC them. It also does moderate damage. Burning Embers. This, oh, I'm sorry, let's just back up real quick. This will also proc your Power Lash, which does additional damage and heals you. Back to the next skill, Burning Embers. This is a dot, helps proc Scoria, also acts as Rally, the stamina two-hand ability. This is the equivalent for the Magic DK. So the longer this ability ticks, over 10 seconds, the larger the heal. You can reapply it to the same target at any duration and receive a heal, or let it expire on its own and receive a heal. This is a great tool when outnumbered. What I personally do is hit one target wait a few seconds, hit an additional target, etc. And the longer you're in that fight, you'll start getting staggered heals without having to recast this, which could make you vulnerable, or have to switch back between bars to recast it. So you could whack this on, let's say three people, switch to your turtle bar, just keep holding block, weaving to generate stamina, and you're going to be popping off heals um, every so many seconds if you staggered those embers and never even have to cast this expensive coagulating blood heal. Alright, back to the front bar. Engulfing Flames. This is another dot. Gonna proc Scoria. And it also increases all of your fire damage what I like to do is fossilize to close the gap on my enemy its range is 15 meters so you'll take a few steps towards them cast your engulfing flame in flames which has a 10 meter radius that's why I said you take a few steps cast your engulfing flames continue to close the gap and then when with your when you're within five meters, you hit them with your burning embers. So now you've got two dots running. Scoria is ready to come down from the sky. And you've got a heal ready. At this point, I do not usually start whipping them. Whip is expensive. I use it more of an execute and pressure when someone's been fossilized. So when I CC them... And I know they're not going to be blocking. I'll whip them a couple times. Because that's going to be damage going right through to them while they CC break the fossilize. What you want to do with this build is apply your dots. And you can either turtle on this damage bar waiting for Scoria. Or you can switch back and turtle on this bar. Which you'll turtle even better because of the defending trait and this skill, which I'll get into in a little bit. Inner Light. This gives us increased max magic and spell critical. Very, very great skill. If you can adjust your playstyle to fit this on your damage bar, I highly recommend it. I, I, I couldn't live without it. I can live without Talons, which I know a lot of people are wondering why they haven't seen it yet. And I'll explain why. Talons are expensive. I don't like them in no CP. I rarely even use them in CP. Now, if you are going for more of a support DK, absolutely slot them. It's going to help hold the enemies down for your team. But this is an aggressive DK playstyle. Yes, you're tanky, 
but you can also do a lot of battlefield control and damage with this build. Last but not least, Ferocious Leaf. Uh, this is kind of our execute. Also can be used defensively if you're low on resources or outnumbered and you can just see your health bars getting smashed and you need to do something leap cc all of them try to get out of there it also applies a damage shield to you of 102 percent of your max health which isn't a lot but you got to remember shields can't be crit even if this shield lasts for the blink of an eye that one attack that hit you did not crit reduced your incoming damage that's never a bad thing so quickly the combo I look for to finish targets is around half health with which a lot of targets get down there quickly just from these two dots and Scoria is hitting them you wait to hear Scoria coming and you combo it with a leap. So your Scoria and your leap's gonna hit at the same time. If they're not dead, as soon as you hit your leap, start smashing your flame lash. So as soon as you're able, you're hitting them with flame lashes. Back bar. Flames of Oblivion. This is an additional dot to proc Scoria. It does decent damage. Gives you spell crit on your back bar as well to give you more of a chance to crit heal from dragon blood and embers. This is another kill combo ability as well. When you first cast this ability, it instantly does its first uh, damage tick. So once you get good at playing this class, you can hear your Scoria coming, even if you're on your offensive bar, switch quick, block cast it if it wasn't already running or about to have one of its procs, switch back to your front bar and leap and you'll hit them with the Flames of Oblivion, the Scoria proc and the leap all at once. There is not many builds out there that can walk away from that with much health most of them die defensive stance I know this might throw a lot of people off I absolutely love this skill it does not really cost that much stamina and you're generating enough magic and from your recovery on this build that even after you cast it you pop two igneous shields with your leftover magic your stam that you used is already back what this does is it reflects a spell projectile back at the caster and stuns them so 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 helpful against sorks and magic night blades that have been cripple spamming a lot. If you got a night blade cripple spamming you, send one back at him. Give him a dose of his own medicine. A lot of them don't know how to handle it. It confuses them. They're not expecting a magic DK without wings to send something back at them. I love this skill. It also increases the amount of damage you can block by 8% and reduces the cost by 8%. This is how I'm able to run 4 M-Pin Force 30 on this build. This skill alone gives you the amount that two more pieces of Sturdy would give you for your blocking ability. That's why I use it. That's why I suggest using it. Again, you don't have to. Dragon Blood. This is our burst heal. I try to use this at the open of a fight. Just because while it's on you have increased healing. 
I try not to use it throughout the fights unless my health is low because it's expensive. And if you spam this too much, you will run out of magic. You want to try and rely on your burning embers for your heals. The cost is much less and in combination with blocking properly and letting it run, it's a larger heal than this as well. Volatile Armor. This is another dot that will be applied to your enemies when casted. It also gives you your major resistances. So that takes our previously mentioned spell resist and physical resist through the roof. Especially on our defensive bar. 30k spell resist, 26k physical resist. Igneous Shield, this helps us regenerate stamina, this gives us a slight damage shield, and it helps boost our healing. Spell Wall, this is one of the best ultimates in the game. It's cheap, it's not quite as good as Corrosive Armor or Magma Shell, because that caps your incoming damage. You can keep being damaged while this is up and killed even while this is running. But what it does is it doesn't charge you the block cost of all the incoming damage. So if your stam gets low and you're in trouble, you can hit this. You'll still be reducing all the incoming damage, but you will be replenishing stamina the whole time it's running. Not to mention your Battle Roar passive, which will also give you resources back when this is casted. So it's a great ability. And most Sword and Shield Templars and DKs are running this now. That's basically the build, guys. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. Um, oh, quickly. I almost forgot. I'm running 5-1-1 one, one on this build. So that's 5 heavy, 1 light, 1 medium. That gives us our undaunted bonuses and helps bring our max resources to the numbers that they're at. Increase your max health, stamina, and magic by 2% per type of armor worn. So we've got a 6% bonus to all of our stats. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you test the build out, I promise you will enjoy it. I will show you my leaderboard scores, which I have not played at all today. Um, after just a handful of hours yesterday, I was in 5th here, I'm down the 20th from not playing all day. I can easily be in the top. 10 or 5 here after this evening. Land grab, I've been pushed off. Flag games, uh, 54. Again, I have not played at all today. This is after, I would say, 5 or 8 hours of Battlegrounds yesterday. Very, very easily capable of the top 100 in all three of these every week with this build. Get yourself a gold reward. Have something a little different than the exact meta that's out there. And have fun with those buffs you get. Everyone have a good day.